And I, I don't think Eli believes that he can outrun Chase anymore. Like he doesn't have the speed when the track gets deep and all that, but it is Unadilla. I think Chase is willing to look at the lights, people. He willing to go night night to wake up to the lights. And Eli ain't. Eli want to keep his vision clear. Hey guys, what's up? You know who it is, your boy James Stewart. And you know where we at, baby? We at the Rewind. Should I say that again? We at the Rewind because we've been off for a couple weeks. Been at Loretta's. Taking a little vacation time, but we back at round nine up at Unadilla where, again, just like it was a few weeks ago, we have somebody getting a neck burn and then maybe another far East Coast neck burn. We're going to have to see if Siri can, you know, figure that, let that language out. But nonetheless, it was a big weekend and it was good to be back. So let's get into it. Round nine from Unadilla, New York, Lucas Oil Motocross. Let's get into it, people. We had a lot of guys coming back this weekend at Unadilla. You know, I always get excited because it's, it's at the Loretta's and you have the rookies, the amateur kids coming up, moving up. These uh, Frisco, whatever, like sounds like a good steak restaurant, which, by the way, if you watch the podcast, I did tell you he was a top five guy. And everybody's like, oh, what? What? I told you. Now, boy can make it two motos. He was tired. But I mean, he was just racing all last week at Loretta's. So anyway, so you always have the, the rookies coming up and um and then in 450 class, if guys are coming back and they want to race the last four outdoors, like this is another stop. And so you have Ferrandis, you have my brother, Wilson. You had a couple guys coming back from injuries and guys had a chance to have a relaxed weekend and then have some regroup to just knock out the last four races. So it's always exciting to have a little bit of break. And it, usually around this time, it's that two week break, um, you know, coming into the season for the final stretch. So we have big number one plate, blue Ferrandis. Comes back, pulls a whole shot. Kid actually wrote good. Like, he actually wrote good. And I, I think when you start breaking down and you start looking at the way this track was set up, especially this weekend, it was one of those ones that you couldn't override. Kind of like Wash Um, But Unadillo is, this track was different than normal. Unadillo was really hard. Like, it was a lot drier. And they had more, um, I would say, the choppy, acceleration bump breaking bumps it was super dry and choppy and you know there was somebody who brought up some soul stuff i think that was the only part of the track after that big tabletop that looked the same to me but it was definitely a lot different than unadilla and i think it which made it more slipperier so with ferrandez coming back um it was actually probably pretty good for him because he was one of those ones like i said you couldn't override it so guys couldn't just you know blow past you even though chase blew past eli at one point you you still saw a guy that was in control the only time that people overrode the track was jet lawrence and then chase at one point they were overriding it and then they almost crashed and did crash but nonetheless i think if you got a start you can you can be up front where i think the second moto Fernandez didn't get a start and he stayed where where he was so i think the track lended to like a technical rider which Fernandez is ken roxon likes his track chase and even Eli. So when you look at the guys that was up front in the first moto, for sure, they are technical, smooth guys, you know, being able to lean and, and um, you know, the way they ride motorcycles are real fluid. So it's not surprising Ken likes this track, not surprising Dylan was doing good, not surprising that Chase did even better than all of them. So um, I, I, I thought the track was unique, different, and it, it definitely made it favor certain type of guys and, and brought out some of the issues in other guys. So yeah, overall it was pretty good if you if you watch like the line selections when they had that battle box on there if you notice eli was charging straight up and down into everything everything he was straight up and down like so the sections that he was okay was once you go past the mechanics i mean the finish line you know he gets in that they hit that little drop down eli was charging down the inside catching that inside rut and then the next corner going into that tabletop where the, the kid crashed in the, the lights class inside, like he was, everything was straight up and down. So any part of the track that, um, you know, he was able to like run straight up and down, like he would actually chase, um, um, catch chase. Chase was just flowing around the racetrack. Well, once he got to the gravity cavity and where he actually passed Eli, the first moto from that point on, like you can see like it, a lot of that, a lot of that section was set up 
you know, you had to be on the outside here to catch the inside over here. It was all like a slot car track, like you would race NASCAR or IndyCar. So Eli couldn't do that. So his straight up and down would, it would be fast going in a straight line, but what it would end up messing, it would mess him up for the next corner. And then that would mess him up for the next corner. And so what you saw was like, once he got to the, right before the mechanics area, Chase was going down the inside and catching that inside rut right when you pass the mechanics area. And what that was doing, inside put him on the outside to allow him to catch the inside to the next corner. And so he was making the, the tracks where it was like he could just momentum, like he can use his momentum around there. But you had to be comfortable on a lean. Where Eli mechanics area, he was going outside because it was straight, it was safe. He would catch that outside rut. But it was putting him on the inside for that next corner. And if you just saw, like, he was going in like this, Chase was going in like that. And so that next little, um, like, section right before you drop down in the gravity cavity and hit the finish line, just look how much time he lost right there. Like, that was your race. So no matter what Eli did, he would make that time back up the whole track and then get to that same spot and lose all that time again. So if you were just calculating as a rider, you would be like, I have to be way closer and I would have to pass him before I get to this section because if I'm close, he's going to win the race anyway. So it's demoralizing. So I think what you saw was Eli realized Chase was coming. He let him pass. He tried pushing Chase in the, in the, um, into a mistake. And they were talking about on the coverage that Eli was following his lines. Eli was not following his lines. Like Eli knew where he was faster at. And I'm sure he had all the team members telling him between motos, Chase is doing this. Eli wasn't doing that anyway because he knew – Doing that will put him in a situation that he don't want to be in. And that's leaned on that, you know, leaned in on the tires and he don't want to crash. So he wasn't following his line. He was just trying to push Chase in, in, into a mistake to crash. And maybe, hopefully, he can get um, past them before um, in one of these sections that he was quicker. But it didn't happen. And, you know, he did that for a couple laps and that was it. So you want a hot take? I don't think Eli Tomac could beat Chase straight up the rest of the year. No. Actually, I would put that on a lot. If they race straight up and down like they have and Chase doesn't crash, Eli won't beat him again. I don't care Beast Mode, any of that. He won't beat him again unless Chase crashed. So Eli's going to lose his title unless Chase throws it away from what I see. So I hope I'm wrong because I think it makes it better racing. But what I saw from number three was a guy that like – like is willing to ride at the level that is going to go all the way up until like he might crash and chase is going to ride to the level like that he will crash and i think there's only what eight what, six motors left he hasn't the light at the end of the tunnel and like eli's won the championship he's playing with house money he wouldn't even have to finish this race remember his knee was hurting people and i think when he won all those eight motos or nine motos, whatever it was, and he didn't break Chase, and Chase did a great job, and this is on Chase, like he finished second and all that stuff, he didn't break him. He let him stay close enough. He let him get that Washugo moto, which was a big deal, and then he came in here, and the guy that raced him the second moto, the first moto, I think the first moto, Eli was definitely struggling with bikes, and he was struggling with bikes second moto, and I think Chase getting a bad start, Eli up front. Chase was trying to override to catch Eli because he thought he was just going to pull away. Well, when he was making all those mistakes and Eli didn't pull away as a rider, that gives you a lot of confidence because you're like, dude, I screwed up everywhere. And like this guy's still right here. Chase settled down, just figured like, well, if I can just ride and not make mistakes, I'm going to catch him. He called Eli. Eli was like, yeah, whatever. I'll get him second moto. Bike's not that good. The guy that came out second moto was on a, the that guy's on a different level, and that guy, like I just said, he ain't going to, like, you won't beat him. Eli won't beat him again. Not like that. Because it was the first time I saw Chase, like, realize that he was better than, better than him, no matter what. He was better than him. And I think Eli knew it already going into it, and Eli was, like, in a situation where he knew – you know, with the whole setup, bike setup and all that, like he he wasn't going to beat Chase. And for Eli's standpoint, I will give him some positives here and just say this was just an anomaly because the only place he was slow was from the gravity cavity to the finish line right there. Like he was only slow there. 
to me, there was a lot more of the little details in this race that made this race um, a lot farther and uh, uh, made that gap between Chase and Eli bigger than, and than what it, I guess, somewhat maybe the times to say it was. This was a big momentum swing for Chase. And I think the only saving grace for Eli is that, like, if I can sit here and point out every single section that, like, well, if you did this, that time gap would have been different. Eli knows that. So the fact that he didn't do that and, like, Chase was in front of him and, and he could have rode those lines. If somebody's going faster and you don't know why, you would just follow their lines. Eli still didn't do that. So that tells you that he knew where he was losing times and he, but he still wasn't going to do it. So that tells me there's a reason why he didn't do that. And it's been what I've been saying all year long is the leans, the be able to lean on his bike, he's uncomfortable doing that. And I think Chase is to the point where, you know, like I said, he didn't break him um, when he won all those motos. And Chase is like, well, I, you know, I'm this close, so I'm going to die trying. Eli ain't going to do that. So it'd be a big telling sign next week at Bud's Creek where I'll get to talk about it in real time. But we're going to see what's happening because I just don't think like, the mental battle i don't think there's no tomac's not mentally he doesn't have that mental edge over chase i think he believes chase is um a strong he's fast and i i don't think eli believes that he can outrun chase anymore like he doesn't have the speed when the track gets deep and all that but it is unadilla it is washugal and this track it's the worst he looked and it is it's the, it's the two tracks that I would say, like, if he was going to struggle on all the little areas that he's been struggling all year, these tracks would be where it is. And so the only saving grace for him is that he's a three-time champ. He's Eli Tomac, and he always still has a chance. But I just think, like, the mind, it, it, the mind, the mind control over Debo might be gone and so the the biggest thing you can give somebody else is confidence the belief that they can do it and that's the problem because you can believe all day long but if they believe they can do something and the guy that has more talent and is willing to die for it that's your problem so i always used to say perception perception well this dude in his perception he thinks he's better and if he thinks he's better you got to go out and stop that. Well, I believe the only way you can stop that if a guy's willing to die trying, then what you think you got to do. So we'll see. There's there's two guys that, right? Like we were talking about two guys because those two guys that's fighting for the championship, um, ironically, those are the two fastest guys in here. I mean, I think with Fernandez coming back, it was nice to see. But I don't think he's going to get in their way. And it was, it was he let Eli by. He also let Chase by to when they got close to him. So I think if they're battling and Francis is up front and he's not faster than those guys, I don't think anyone's going to battle him because they're that close. So I think we should just stick on the, the two guys right now with Eli and, and, and Chase and, and from what I saw. And I, there was one point in, in the first moto, I think it was, yeah, first moto, Chase passed Eli after that sky shot jump. And right before you go down to that, gra not gravity cavity, but that little, they used to call it screw you. I don't know what it is now. And Chase went around Eli on the outside. To me, that told me like enough, like I could have cut TV off right there. I could have cut TV off because remember we were talking about Roxon um, at, it was at Hangtown when he let Chase go around him on the outside. The fact is, Eli let Chase go around the outside. Now I know they almost cross jump and maybe he was scared and he needed to change diapers. But when, you, when you're in this situation, I was like, you know, I knocked down my mama, grandma, whoever it is. The fact that Eli didn't run it in on Chase sent two messages. That one, like, he's uncomfortable. And I think that I would say die trying or whatnots, live for next week is his, his attitude, which is completely fine. Because at the end of the day, like, you got to be survival of the fittest. And so if, maybe if you're in it to win it, that's to be the way it is. But to me... What it said when I even reiterate on what happened with Roxon is that it wasn't what he did is what it said to others how he is. And to me, when I watched Chase after that point, he was he wasn't worried about Eli. And I think Eli has always had that fear of like, hey, if he goes in beast mode or like, man, like I like I don't want him in that zone. 
Like, I don't think anybody's ever been afraid of Eli like a Barsha like type. So I don't think Chase always thought like he would take him out or anybody. And they know Eli's not dirty rider because he's he's not. And that's that's a good thing. Whatever. I always said that Chase, there was only one person he kind of feared was Anderson because the way Anderson rides. Well, I think if you're getting down to this situation, then you have to start sparking some kind of fear because the guy is clearly at this track. He's riding better than you. And I, I keep reiterating, like the last race, you don't want to go in where you're six points up and you got to beat the guy or five points. And you got to try to beat the guy, one of his favorite tracks at Paula. So to me, Chase likes his track. Eli struggles. So I thought it would have been a big message for Eli, at least to run it in on him, like run it in. And the fact that he didn't do that just told me that he's in that. I'll, I will save it for next weekend and again, which is fine. But it sent a message to Chase that like Chase doesn't have, He's not afraid of him anymore. Like, he's not. And you saw that evident in the second moto because Chase didn't make any mistakes. And when Chase went around him, he just passed him like no other. Like, Eli was on the back of him, da-da-da-da-da, doing all this stuff. He didn't care, you know? And I think that was a part of, like, Chase knew, like, dude, I'm going in outside. Like, I don't think he would. But if the fact is, if he would have, I think it would have changed the whole complexion of the race because maybe he wouldn't have done anything knocked him down but the fact if you wrote it in would make chase think differently of, of him every time he gets close to him like knowing that eli for this championship will actually knock me down he would he would race me and he didn't do that so i just thought you saw a guy that knew he was faster that wasn't afraid of him in the second moto and he just clearly did his thing and beat him and so um th this weekend was a lot of it was a lot about setup and how to ride this racetrack. And I think, um, you know, how you ride it, you got to ride it on the meat of the tire on here. Stop leaning, don't do none of that stuff. And as I talked about before, you saw the the line selections of Eli and, and, and Chase, you saw the line selections and how they were riding on different tracks. And they talked about on the coverage of, you know, Eli wanted to follow him and see his lines. Well, maybe for the first motor, he didn't recognize that Chase was doing his lines. But between that, they told him, Coker at Yamaha told him, this is where you're faster at. We, we got technology, people. We know what's going on. So he knew. But Eli didn't follow that line. He didn't follow that line. So that wasn't the case. He just knew he couldn't do it. And Chase could. And he was hoping that Chase crashed. And Chase didn't. And Chase won. And Eli didn't. And, and the result was he's getting a neck burn. But we ain't there yet. And that was the case. But... A little tidbit. When you know a guy confident, people, watch. Chase was there when he passed Eli at first moto. And when I say it, it sent him a message when he went around the outside. Watch Chase the last lap. Watch him rod. Watch him like where I landed on Ricky. Right there, they changed that section. Watch when he jumps off that tail top. See how he like gasses it, like full on like mugging him. See how he charges the whole last lap. Dude was sending a message, people. It was FedEx, UPS. It, they were on holiday. It was urgent, urgent shipping. He was sending a message. And I think that message was that he wanted those guys to know, like, I'm legit. Like, I'm legit. I'm not tired. I'm faster on a track where everybody's uncomfortable. And I know you don't like this place, Eli, whatever. I'm beating your ass today. Right. And I'm not just doing I did last weekend. And maybe you could say I should have done it the weekend prior because I've been right there. But I'm beating your ass today and you know it. And I want you to definitely know it. And that's what you saw. So when you watch Chase ride that last lap, dude, it's up 10 seconds. He was riding with authority. So that second moto, that authority transpired even bigger to where it was like, I can do this calmly. And I know I can. The person between the first moto was like, damn, I'm hyped. Second person was like, I know I can. Problem? Can't you see a problem? I mean, it ain't a problem for me. It ain't a problem, but it might be a problem for him. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna harp on this because Eli is Eli. He is the alien. He is the 250, 450 supercross outdoor champion. He's everything. So I ain't writing the dude off. I'm just saying that it's a little tougher than it was. And I think he didn't break homeboy. It, the homeboy's fighting back on the level. And I think Chase sees that light at the end of the tunnel and says, you know what? I might have to wake up looking at them lights. 
Because I'm on the hospital bed. You know how they got those lights above you? And you're like, damn, I'm here. Where am I at? I'm in the hospital because I'm looking at lights. I think Chase is willing to look at the lights, people. He willing to go night-night to wake up to the lights? And Eli ain't. Eli want to keep his vision clear. Well, you might have to look at the lights, Eli. You might have to wake up in the dark to wake up, see the lights, to beat this dude because this dude's willing to do it. And that's what I see. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, hey, he's a champion. He don't like this track. He was struggling. Chase loves this track. There were ruts. And we'll just see what happened at Bud's Creek. That's what you could say. And if I'm Coker and I'm all the other people, that's what I'm telling him. And Eli's probably believing that himself. But little birdie told me that he was pretty pissed after that. He like he was a little upset. So you can tell yourself all you want. But in the back of your mind, when you go to sleep, you might slap little Johnny across the face because you're like, God damn it, daddy got beat today. Daddy, that goes that man. And that man was Chase Sex and he went flying past me and I couldn't do nothing about it. But that's it. Hey, look at this shiny number one plate, Supercross champ. You know, Supercross champ. So we'll see. I'm excited to call it. But I saw a lot this weekend and y'all did too. But if you start breaking it back down, you can go back. Like when somebody else last time passed Tomac like this. All right, well, it's been a while. When has Tomac passed Chase when Chase was up front, both motos this year? I'll wait for it. Because it hasn't happened. So neither one of these guys have passed the other one, like when they're up front, like when they're battling like this. Not just, okay, he's in the lead, you pass him. No, I'm talking about run the guy down on there and pass him the way he did. And I would say both motos because, you know, at one point, Tomac pulled out a little bit, but it was just a different feel and then just jet pass him. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, Chase was winning uh, Millville. Nah, it ain't the same, bro. It ain't the same. They were up there. They were super close. Um, Tomac passed him and he, you know, held him off, you know, cut him off, whatever. No, Chase, like, passed him and then, like, Ricky Carmichael's my ass. I just, like, he was there and then he wasn't. And then you realize, goddamn, he was sh champagne in it, talking to Scott Taylor, and you just crossed check flag. You know, you're like, I was just here. That's what happened. So, but it, it Again, it wasn't just that. You know, so go back and just figure out when that happened again and that kind of win. But just figure out also, like I said, watch when Chase rides. Like, watch what he's doing, how he's riding on there at the end of the race. He already had this race won. And you would say, I got us throwing away more races than, you know, um, you know, a VHS tech tape. You know, you would think that he would just calm down, just finish this thing out because he clearly knew Eli was giving up. Like, not giving up, but he already had him covered. Nah, dude was riding with authority. He was trying to put his stamp on that thing so the way he was riding with anger people he had animosity and it shows so that to me is a belief that like he ain't worried and he's trying to send a message and the message was sent so we'll see if he answers it and sends that back because he's gonna have to at Bud's Creek because otherwise it's over Tomac's gonna start racing behind him even when he's up front like he did the first moto and second moto it doesn't work that way, people. These motors are way too long, and somebody's way fast enough. So that's what I saw. So I don't know where all that went, but it went somewhere. And you know where we have to go because it's, it's I almost feel like this one was a special one, but it's not special because it just happened two weeks ago. And I just think, like, at the end of the day, sometimes when you win, you win. And sometimes when you win, you won. Like, sometimes you won. I, what does that mean? I don't know. But what it means at this show and for everybody else out there, and I know for Chase Sexton, I know he wants it. And he was winning it like, he was like, incredible Hulk. He was mad because he wanted to get that neck burn. Hit it for a call. Suntan, neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. Neck was on fire. You know when a guy's feeling it too, when he comes on the podium, he's like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I said it a few weeks ago. I was like, look at everybody else's face on the Yamaha crew. Like, they were like, oh, we know what's up. We know what's up. They were calm. They were calm after this race, but. Dude pulled off his hat, had them blonde hair, even blonder than what it was. I didn't know what it was. I was like, damn, is it, is it like an old Western movie that the field is, has no water for a while? And that thing just, it's light of fire, just blows up. Nah, it was just blonde hair. Dude was like thugging, thugging, Django style right there. Congratulations, Chase Sexton. Gave that boy business this weekend. So we'll see what happens. Next weekend's going to be on. I get to get there and call it. So. But we're going to have to talk about 250 class. Where? The far east coast. And Mr. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Motocross American superstar. 
This is Justin Cooper. They got something done. But let's go back. We'll be right back, people. When I'm watching, when I'm watching the 250 class, and this weekend we had, you know, Jet Lawrence. He's been, you know, faster, better than rest, and it's been the uh, Lawrence Boys shows all year. And I think with the break off, and Joe Shimoda has been actually coming along. Like last a uh, few weekends ago, I watched Shigul. You know, he was riding good, got him a, he got him a moto, or, or was up there competing with those guys. I think Hunter won that moto, but he's been up there. The speed has grown, and then same thing with Justin Cooper. Um, I do believe actually Justin could have won both motos this weekend. Um, he, he crashed the first moto, but he actually rode good, um, you know, too, and obviously won the second one. But all year it's been about Jet and Hunter, you know, but, you know, mainly Jet hasn't been able, been pushed into situations. And now I talked about that watch you go. I'm like, dude, the kid rides in the future, like the future, like he, everything he thinks about is down the road. Well, this weekend, everything he was thinking about was right in front of him, you know, and you could tell like this was the first race this year um, and, and outdoors that I would say he lost his train of thought in the big picture of, you know, the things that allowed him to get his point sleep. You know, he, he wouldn't take the bait, like I would like to say. He's a kid, you know, so it was we were all talking about like how, um, you know, how uh, mature that is by not taking the bait. Well, this weekend, Mr. 401, phone book, Nick Romano, hometown race rookie, you can tell he he was giving it to him. Like he was flustering Jet. And I think it was the fact that he saw this three-digit rider. He might not even know who the guy was that was like up there racing him. And you can tell certain rookies when they come in, like D, uh, Francisco, like <clears throat> Rider D, I'll say, Rider D, he was there, he racing. He gets close, you know what, look, man, I'm here, I'm getting my feet wet. Well, this dude out here, like, he was actually, like, competing. Like, he wanted to show that he was the, he's the next guy. And so you can tell by the way he raced him, like, he cut him off. Like, well, like, you ain't going to pass me. And I think that the fact that um, Shimoda was up front and um, the fact is that Jet Lawrence saw and he knew how difficult this track was to like make up that much time and rod it. He was trying to get around Nick and he was getting flustered. And you could tell when he he did it, like he started making mistakes over rotting it and then he hit the ground. It's the first uh, first time this year he's done that. And it was I would say it's the first time he didn't look past and just kind of like picked his way and and tried to make the pass. Well, he got lucky because he almost looked at lights too. He almost looked at the lights. And I ain't talking about the credits where the race. I'm talking about the doctor lights. You know, he was getting there. And you could just tell, like, that was that that kid, you know, like cool throwing donuts, like whatever, slapping his brother on high five. Like, hey, how cool was that? When brother was about to beat his ass because he was so mad. That was that. I mean, it wasn't like it was with Hunter a few weeks ago when he was trying to kill old homeboy when he was like that, 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 like that kind of crazy. But it was just a different. He just lost train of thought. So anyway, he hit the ground multiple times this weekend. And usually when you got a guy that's leading the points, they usually don't make, um, you know, they might throw away one moto. Like he did the first moto. The fact that as he came back and did it again was like, you know, he was just having an off day. You know, he, he threw out the hand guards twice. Same one. It was all messed up. And so it was a tough day for him. I don't, did he even make the podium? Yeah. The first time off the podium, but it's, it's suspected. He's a rookie. And I'm not a rookie. He's, he's young. And we all got to have those races. Even that year, I won 23 out of 24 moto as well. The one I didn't win, it was a bad one. So as I talked about before, the bike leaning over and the traction, you know, you want to be lean, kind of have traction or 
straight up and down so you can you know trust the front end while well, jet's coming in here and it looks like you would say he just starts watching the front end, which he does. But what you see when you start slowing it down, he's starting to hit and his front wheel actually starts coming off. Like he's like he hit braking bumps on there. He's leaned over, his front wheel starting to pop up over there. And he actually catches the side of a rut on there and he starts sliding. The front end starts sliding. It starts pushing, pushing like a shopping cart. You're trying to turn on a little front front end. Like it's, it's doing this number and it starts pushing like you're trying to turn on ice in a car. And then finally, it, it's pushing, pushing, it hooks up. And boy, that moment right there, like probably saved his championship because what he does is when it hooks, normally what happens is your hand blows off. And so all of a sudden you get all that G-force and when that bike's, that front end's pushed down and it's on unloading, you're laying on the handlebars because you're about to flip over, your hands are off, hits you in the chest and it pushes you and it knocks you forward. What Jet does, and I don't know if it's on purpose or whatnot, it's probably happening too fast, but he holds on long, like he, he holds on. So when that bike kicks him up, you know, he's actually still holding the handlebars, which saves him from getting flung off. And you can see him, he's over the handlebars, he's holding on. And that's what allows him to ride and kind of slide out on the front end and down. Normally when you see that stuff, they call it the big high side, is when a guy gets hit, gets hit in the stomach and their hands are off because normally front end goes around too fast and it just snaps out of your hand, you can't hold on to it and then you get flung off and then what jet was doing he was holding on so it saved the title and he was like god damn dude like you know brother was like i don't know i hear a ticking noise in my bike i don't know like nah that was jet pooping his pants on there because you might got hit with a turd i don't know i don't know that scared me and i'm sitting here watching it but you know from down under almost got shot but it was um you know that was all because of what was happening in front of him in far east coast was so far out front that it was like you was making him get nervous. And when he gets nervous, people, when people get nervous, they start doing things they, they normally don't do. People start shooting in the dark and they might not realize, but they just shot Cujo and Cujo got shot. But nonetheless, it was because the ghost of the far east coast of Mr. Smooth, what is he, like Japan criminal? Like, cause he's smooth. Like he was Shimoden, Shimoto. I don't know people. All I know is Joe is on another level. Ain't your average Joe no more. So we got to come up with a different name. We got to come up with a different name because he's going to get something that he he's only had once this year. And he, we put it in a different language. But this time, we're just going to keep it authentic. Mr. Far East Coast Joe Shimoda. Hit him for a call. Suntan. Neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. And the way he did it, he, he knew this time where he was. He actually was like, I'm adding up. It was looking suspect. It was looking suspect, but the for down unders, yeah, one guy ticking, one guy flying, the other guy just cooping off, like hanging with Mr. Cooper. Nobody was doing that. And he was just doing his thing, just smooth, 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 all the way up to the overall. So Joe, second one, the only one. Them far East Coast and them from down unders been winning everything in that class. And he did it again. So congratulations, Mr. Nacho Avis Joe, again. All right, people, that was it. You know what time it is. My favorite time, your favorite time, hell, all of his favorite time. But first, commercial break. We'll be right back with Stews and Stews. All right, we back, people. You know what time it is. My favorite time, your favorite time. Hell, a lot of people's favorite times. Stew to stew. So, up uh, first, it's going to be easy because we've been off. And I always say we just get ease into it. And if you win the race, it's a default. Sometimes more defaults be prettier than others. But nonetheless, you get it. And then so I'm going to have to give it to this guy, even though I don't think it was a default. I think it was deserved this weekend. And he already got one before. And he's going to have to get it again. Mr. Far East Coach Joseph Moto. Cole, are you on it? Hit it for him. Suntan. Next on fire. I just wanted to make sure people he was on because we just came back from commercial break. I want to make sure he's still like he's still here and he's still here. Mr. Joe Shimoda. You did it, bro. You're the only one which says a lot. Not named Hunter Jet. That's one. Yeah, I know Cooper one. Hang on with Mr. Cooper and I should get him. You can get a, a, a div. Yeah, because you only won one moto. You know, so you're going to get it. Maybe you Captain USA still say why we even talking about it, people. Nobody's talking about it, but hey, maybe I'm just talking about it. Hopefully that solved that issue. Look good this weekend, but he didn't get the full one. 
So Joe Shimoda, Mr. Fire East Coast, you will stew. And of course, the next one, Jay Sexton. Now, when I say Eli does things that like, it's stupendous and it sends messages like a stew or you get two stews or whatever. This is what this is. Like you just can't give this guy a regular stew. Not like you just can't because it wasn't like, okay, he won. Like, okay, he, they were close. Nah. Okay, Tomac got a bad start and he passed them. Nah. I mean, he passed Tomac and Tomac was like, mama, there goes that man. And that man was chasing sexy. He didn't know. And then he was trying to relive in the second moto. Like, maybe I can do a stupendous job with bringing back Mr. 2002 James Stewart Chavez thing and Unadilla. Not to bring it up, but to bring it up because that's what it looked like. And it was like, no, Chase is like, you can let me go past you. Just whatever. Or just rode around you on the outside. You should have took my ass out, but you didn't. So that's a wrap for you. You could try to do that, but it didn't. It didn't. It didn't happen. So I just said I didn't three times, whatever, how many times, but I just didn't do it because Chase Sexton didn't let it happen. And what he didn't let it happen was beast mode. I don't even think he claims him as beast mode. Chase Sexton just gave it to Tomac, the business. And all I'm going to say, people, is that things might be a little different. Things just might be different. You can figure out what the hell that means. I don't even know what that means. We'll figure it out next week when we show this show. But I just think that was a message sent. And the message sent was Chase Sexton giving Tomac the business. And when he did it, he was angry. I'm going to have to put this boy on stewed list because the way he was riding, he was angry. Not like a Ken Roxon angry that he's mad because the dirt's there. Well, uh, it is a motocross shot. They bring it. No, it ain't that mad. It's like not confused, man. He was angry. And he was angry because that red plate's been off his bike, but it's back. So Chase Sexton, you a stew. And then I don't, I don't know, Cole. We, you said Mr. 411 Ramon that like, you know, giving Jet the crash. I do say he was the reason why Jet didn't finish the way he finished this weekend. I would say that. He opened up the phone book, realized there was a lot of numbers in Mr. 411, or 411 didn't give him his number, whatever it was, gonna charge him all that money, just make a phone call. Whatever it was, he was on the ground. So I could say, yeah, you are a stew, but we don't like to give people stews for causing other people problems. But good job, Ramona. Like, hey, you at hometown, you're back. You've been fast since the first race, but I haven't seen you since the first race. So maybe you were out throwing out phone books, whatever it was, but you were back. So good to see that. And then um, let's give uh, Ferrandez and let's give Malcolm. They were back. Some people were backer than others, and some people were back to the blackness. They were back. It was good to see them back. Some people were like, damn, I'm here, but I ain't here. And then, but you're on this list. So we'll give all y'all stew. Anybody that finished the list, y'all stew. So that was that list. Chase Sexton, Fire East Coast. And that boy was mad. So stew, pissed off. Pissed off because Chase rode around you on the outside again. Pissed off because you couldn't do nothing about it. Pissed off because you're like, damn, I'm going to wait for tomorrow. My bike was not messed up. But in the back of your man head, you know you are pissed off. Dude. So, Tomac. Now, I know. I know. He was cool, calm, and collected. And, like, maybe I'm not even saying he's stupid. And originally, when I thought about this list, was like two seconds ago, I wasn't going to put him on this list. And maybe he shouldn't be on this list, but I think he's going to realize maybe not this weekend, maybe not next weekend, maybe never, maybe never for his hopes, all of us, maybe never that this weekend was a big turning point and he's going to be pissed if he realizes that because he's going to realize like, damn, like that Washugal second motor was bigger than the thought. That Washugal second motor with Chase Sexton getting that overall and writing on that number one plate and then going in Unidale after his two weeks off and him passing me both motos like that was a big deal even though I was like I'll wait for the second moto and the second moto happened and the same thing happened like the first moto that was a big deal so maybe you're going to be stewed in the future so we'll just put that on the future stew for Eli Tomac so I don't know how we can do that Cole you can figure that part out future stew Eli possibly question mark there it is Next would be Jet Lawrence. Now, the kids, like, is he stew that he crashed? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, his brother was stew. He's still mad at homeboy for pulling them tear-offs and not having the tear-offs and cutting them off. He's still mad at that. 
So I don't think he's still like that. I think he's just frustrated that, you know, he couldn't win again. And not only he didn't win, he didn't get on the podium. So that sucks. But I don't think he really stood. I think he was happy for Mr. Far East Coast Joe Shimoda. So he ain't stood. I don't know. Hell, future stood Tomac. That's a new one. Default stu, Ken Roxon. That's a new one. Because that's about all that. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, should I say I'm stu for not being on a get list? No, not really. Because, you know, I, I keep it real, people. And maybe the show needs to stop and not go anymore because I'm going in a different direction. But just to close it up. So there's your list, people. I know it's not your normal list, but I think these guys were happy to get out of it. Unadilla was different. It was different. It was a lot different than normal. I think some guys might be, um, let's say, relieved on there that they finished the motor. But I don't think anybody stewed. Like they can wish they can go back and redo what they just did and maybe take Chase would, but that would mean he'd be on the stew list, like stew list. He'd be happy. So everybody else, I think they happy that it's over with and they get to move on to Bud's Creek where, you know, hey, hey, the scrub was back in the day. Well, anyways, things might happen at Bud's Creek. Nonetheless, if this happens again, like this weekend, then yes, the future stew will be coming to reality in a present stew. But until then, just like every else, we have to wait to see. All right, people, that was from round nine from Unadilla, where you have Mr. Far, Far, Far East Coast do his thing. Joe Shimoda, great, great, great Joe, great Joe. Not your average Joe, no mo. And then you have from over here, I don't even know where they state, Indiana, Illinois, something that starts with an I from Chase Sexton going beast mode on the beast. Mama, that goes that man. That's what Tomac said. And daddy, He's going to have to retool the factory and come back out and figure out, is he willing to look at the lights? Is he willing to look at the lights, people? And then we'll find out. But we'll find out next weekend. Until then, I'll see you guys this weekend. And then I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Have a good weekend. And make sure you tune in. That was it. Round nine from Unadilla, New York.